Hey guys, I wanted to come quickly here to uh, make a video about something that has been tugging at my my heart for the past week or so. I've been reading the the synoptic, the synoptic gospels, uh, Matthew, Luke, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, as well as John. But while reading the synoptic gospel, I realized something that the church is lacking. We're lacking true discipleship. And we're lacking true and authentic teachings. And that's what Jesus dedicated his life to. At least the last three years of his life, he dedicated to teaching his disciples his word. To teaching his disciples how to hear his voice and how to follow it. How to obey his commandments. How to, how to walk according to the path that he had laid out for them. And he has basically told them the cost of following him, of being his disciple. Every single time he would tell them, this is not going to be EBD. But if you live, if you leave brother, mother, uh, daughter, whatever it is, uh, uh, wealth, possession for my sake, you will not fail to reap a hundredfold, even persecution in this lifetime. So yes, coming to Jesus is great. You get to experience a love and an intimacy that you've never felt before, but it also comes at a cost. And I feel like the body of Christ hasn't been taught the cost of following Christ and the faith that it, re it will require. Because a lot of things are happening and you're thinking, how, how does that make sense? It doesn't make sense because it requires faith. Of course, wisdom as well. Let's look at salvation real quick. We thinking, we're thinking salvation is Jesus coming, um, dying on a cross for us and forgiving us of our sins. We teach that about like, grace is enough to forgive us of our sins. So we're thinking I'm forgiving of my sins. But at the same time and at the same breath, salvation is Jesus coming down and taking away the power of sin so that you're no longer enslaved by it. That means you have been crucified with Christ on that cross. It is no longer you who live, but Christ who lives within you. It says that uh, we have we've been saved by grace through faith, not by our works, because he doesn't want anybody to boast about it. It's a freely given gift. So if Jesus Christ has given you grace, if, if he has given you righteousness, if he has given you holiness, and he has justified you, why do you look like he hasn't? It's like a king going down and visiting his citizens and, 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 and seeing how poor and destitute they are. So he's like, hey, come into my kingdom. I have a lot of wealth for you and I'll give you the wealth. So you go to his kingdom. He gives you the wealth and you come back out. And with the wealth he has given you, you just put that wealth under, under the rug and you continue to live in poverty. It means you have never really received whatever it is the king has given you. Because if you had, you would use the wealth that he has given you and show other people the change that has happened in your life. That you're no longer lo live, living as a pauper, like as a poor person, uh, but you've been freed from that, from that poverty. Now you look like wealth. And I'm not saying, I'm not talking about wealth, but I'm, 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 I'm making an allusion uh, to salvation. If give, Jesus has given you righteousness... You will exude righteousness. If he has given you holiness, you will exude holiness. I know that it doesn't happen overnight. That's the sanctification process. It's a lifetime worth of, of work of um, worth of process. But at the same time, by their fruit, the word of God says that you shall know them. So where are the fruits that you're bearing? Where are the fruits of righteousness that you're bearing? He has come to deliver you from the power of sin. Not just for you to be reconciled with the Father and go to heaven. He doesn't want you to experience that, uh, that sin anymore. He wants to set you free of that, of the bondage. But it's so sad that many of us want to hold on to it. It's like, nah, that is just too good. I can't let it go, God. I can't let it go. You've forgiven me, right? Jesus is like, yes, I've forgiven you. But do you have faith enough in me that I can take that away from you and I can set you free? We have to believe there's so many wrong teachings that I've been taught in a church and the body is so ill-equipped. But 
let's believe. Let's believe in Jesus. Believe in the power of his grace, the power that empowers, empowers us to live a, a life, the life that he wants us to live, not the life that we want to live. I want to read a verse right now. Romans 6, verse 6, it says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slave to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. So we have died with Christ on, on that cross. So we're no longer enslaved by sin. We've been crucified with him. So that power that sin had once to like, oh, I can't control myself. He died on the cross so that you will no longer deal with that. And that's the power. The Holy Spirit helps you do that. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. You don't do it because on your own, you don't have the willpower to stop. But Christ gave you the power. Now, utilize it. Utilize it. It's like when he delivered the children of Israel uh, um, from Egypt and they had to go through the wilderness. Some of them did not want to let go of that mentality of the life they used to live while in bondage. And they had to pay the price for it because they never experienced the promised land. So don't, th not, this world has nothing to offer you. Trust me. Because you don't want to gain the whole world and lose your soul. This world has nothing to offer you. Christ has so much more to offer you than sin. So much more. Get to experience sin. And you will see that your life will never be the same. You don't have to deal with sin. And how do you know what sin is? By reading the word of God. Galatians 5 tells you the acts of the flesh. All of that he can deliver you from. You have faith enough to believe in him, but you don't have faith enough for him to deliver you. No, believe and he will set you free. Like there's so much more that we need to know as the body of Christ. Anyways, um, this is all that I have right now. I'm probably going to come up with another video sooner, longer video that talks about discipleship, true and, and, and authentic discipleship. But um, anyways, I, would ho I hope you guys have... A great rest of your day. Mm. Jesus is so good. All right, guys. Bye.